this is the method for putting in the spring. There are two ways this can go in. It can go with the bowed portion facing out or the bowed portion facing in. As would be expected, there's a little bit of a finesse that's required to put this in place. It's a very springy piece of metal. Basically, you just push this in. And you can see it's a little bit off center. Then you gently place this in until it more or less kind of centers itself. And that's it for that. And again, it operates very easily. Putting it in the other direction is pretty much the same thing. You can see it's not that difficult to remove. But the this is a little bit trickier. You have to kind of push it in, holding it in place, and then rotating this portion here so that it, again, centers. And then moving this forward and backwards just a little bit either way until you can tell that it's pretty much kind of centered in place. And again, the same thing happens. Now, because this has still a tendency to rock to one side, I decided to make some permanent non-reversible changes. And uh, this is going to show you what some of the non-reversible changes look like. This is a Dremel brand high-speed variable speed tool, rotary tool. I have a well-used cutting disc on the end of this. And this was suitable for cutting through the plastic in this end cap. As indicated earlier, this is a non-reversible step, as you would imagine. I used a relatively low speed and just gently move this in and out, rotating it from one point to another, and then cut alongside the folded or the, the other portion and until it cut through pretty fairly well, and then remove this with just a pair of um, needle nose type pliers. The same thing went for this end over here. Now the reason why I did this is not because I have a destructive nature. It is so that when putting this back into the cap, and again this is designed to prevent dirt from getting in here, these portions that are here that normally would interfere with this shoulder, both at the top and bottom here, which would not be the case with the original design, but is the case with this modification. These now, long, now no longer get in the way, at least not very much. This top section is the most critical one because if you don't have that, it will tend to push, it will get in underneath this little spring thing and it actually will push this down a little bit. So this is already depressed slightly under those circumstances before you would put things together. I don't like having that. I want this open as much as possible or up as high as possible. So this will then snap into place and it now looks not much different from the original factory design. So now this will work and this cutout here will keep this from moving from side to side. At this time, I'm not clear if this thing will have a tendency to move forward or backwards. It won't be able to go very far forward. Um, but again, it's real easy to periodically check this by just simply removing the cap. So that's something you can do routinely. All three modifications that I have made so far have an additional capability that is not part of the factory design. And that is that, let's suppose, for instance, that you have decided to use this model with the spring in place, either with or without this cap modification, which again is non-reversible. 
this gives you some other options. For instance, the original design was put together like this. And when you finished using it, you depress this and close it up, and there you are. If you wanted to, and you certainly can do this, you now have the capability of not only putting this back in like this, but you can now easily remove this entirely, flip this around, and now put this in here so that this is firmly locked in place. It's a little bit of a different design as you can see. The, these parts don't go together as, as you would like, etc. But it's relatively minor in the, in the case, but this will definitely not go anywhere. So that's a possible plus depending on your point of view. It also does not depend on these little ears that are part of the original design from this cap that is supposed to provide some internal friction to keep this thing from sliding out. And to remove this, of course, all you do is just press down on this and, well, you press down on this. Easier said than done. Well, there, finally. This is now after I've done some practice putting this in and out several times. This is also showing the modification that I've made since, uh, since the last uh, section of the video to the cap. This has been elongated, this cut in the lower portion of the cap. The top portion has remained the same, but the bottom portion has been lengthened. The distance from this shelf here to this cut here is about 11 millimeters. I would imagine if you made it to 10 millimeters or whatever, it probably would be okay. But this is sufficient to clear this portion of the spring that is shown here. So now when you press down on the button, although the spring rocks a little bit, it no longer interferes with this portion of the plastic cap because it now straddles it rather than pushes in on it. And so now you can push this little button to your heart's content and nothing will happen. It does not change the position of the spring, but again, because this cap is easy to remove, it's easy to visually check this spring position. One, for any dirt accumulation that might be getting in underneath this part, part of the spring, but also to check to see whether or not there's been any significant change in the position of the spring. Normally, this spring seems to, as I've indicated before, kind of self-centers. It's not that difficult to determine just by feel if it looks like it's kind of in the right place. But once it's in the right place, it tends to stay there. There does not appear to be any significant shift one way or the other that occurs when this button is pressed down. Now you'll notice that the this trowel is set up with this reversed handle storage as I've shown and in the first part of the uh, video, this was difficult to remove because in a way I hadn't really tried it until that impromptu um, portion of the video. It is not really that difficult. It is more difficult than the bolts, but it isn't that difficult. If you press down on it, it slides out. And as you can see, it's not. And again, once it's locked in place, it's fine. And this will work with the cap on or without without the cap. Now I'm also going to show in this section how much of a difference has has been made since I've re, since I've lengthened the cut on this. Initially, my thoughts were that I would use the bolt technique for most of the uh, uh, use of this tool, but I have since changed my mind that this spring mechanism now 
in the way that I've modified it is so uh, suitable for use of this tool that I have had that now as my primary and the bolt modification is a backup. I will continue to take in this little bag here the necessary bolt piece and wing nut so that I have these as a spare. So if anything ever happens to the spring, I can now still use the tool. One of the advantages of having these bolts is that this is cheap and readily available. If you lose this, you go to a hardware store and get another one, cut off the bolt, and you're good to go. Not so if anything happens to this spring, you are out of luck. Now the company may send you another one and you can then put it back in place, but they may not. Uh, so for the, for the time being, this spring is a critical element if you obviously are going to be using the spring. But if you're not going to be using the spring, the bolts are a cheap, easily obtainable alternative, and it works. It's a little bit more time-consuming to put things together, and I'll show you just how quickly this tool now can be used with the spring compared to what I did in the part one, showing how difficult it was, especially to disengage the handle. But the bolt technique works and it is a good alternative. So I will keep this in my little bag whenever I'm using this thing. Now I'm gonna show you how quickly this can be used with the spring. Again, after I've played around with this, it's really not that difficult to remove it from the handle. And putting it back in is also easily done. Uh, but the interesting thing about this now is that this can be done with one hand now this would have been, I think, impossible prior to this time. As you can see, it's with one hand, you can now move it, you can then put it in place, disengage, put it in place, and you can do this uh, all day long um, to your heart's content. And actually, I probably have now played with this about a hundred or I would say maybe more than that times just playing with this opening and closing this just to make sure for completeness sake that it actually works and it really in fact does. This is a very quick method of using this tool compared to the original design. I'm very happy with the spring. I'm very happy with the bolt but in any event it works no matter which way you want to go. This is showing the modification I've made to allow an easy removal of this cap if I'm going to be using the bolt. As you can see, I have the spring in place. This is just, again, to show what this would look like. So suppose that you have the bolt in place and you need you've used the tool and you want to now disengage it and you want to gain access to the inside of this so that you can put your finger against the bolt head to hold it in place while you remove the wing nut it is difficult unless you have a like fingernail even then if you have a lot of dirt around here it might be difficult to dislodge this little cap so what i did was there was a little additional cut that was in the plastic when i was doing this with the rotary tool and I just used a piece of floss that I have a little knot on the end, dental floss. And so this is now around this little cut portion. And it doesn't really get in the way of using the tool, but when you want to disengage the cap, you just simply pull on this. And that's all there is to it. So you now have the cap removed. You can now gain easy access to the interior. And so it, it works very well to install the bolt of course you don't have the cap on but to remove it when it's in its normal position for use this allows an easy access to it so again when you're you you can see the little cut here that's on this thing here but this this is a, a very simple modification that again allows quick access to the cap and then access to the interior